Well, hi there from Cord Up. Uh, you found me in my little den here. Uh, if one thing it's made me do is tidy up a little bit, although it doesn't really look like it. Anyway, I'd like to try and make a monkey's fist jig. So the first part of this is just going through what we might need. Um, now, we need a couple of scrap pieces of wood. Now this, as you can see by the edges, is a part of that sort of awful flooring stuff. We used to have it in our kitchen until we changed it to something else, but it interlocks. But it's compact wood, um, so I thought we'd use that as the lid or the top part of uh, what we're going to make. I'll come back to my design in a minute. So that's that bit. I did think that the base, which I'd like slightly thicker, I mean that's about, oh I don't know, a quarter to three eighths thickness. And this is about half an inch, 13 mil. Now this was the end off of um, a shelf that I made for my utility room. And I did think about using that, but then when I get hold of it, I can bend it. So it's obviously sections of wood, so I didn't want to use that, but I'm using this as a test piece for something and you'll see what happens there. Um, the base again is 13 mil. This is another piece of compressed wood. The last one I made was out of ply board which was half an inch but I thought I'd give this piece a go because it was left over from something I made some time ago. So that's those two things. Two pieces of board, don't know what they are, I like a thicker base than I do the th thinner top. Then we want, well, I bought these chopsticks online. And they didn't turn out quite as what I wanted. Um, not so good as the ones that I had before. There was obviously th uh, chuck away ones. These were only about one pound 50, like $2, less than $2. But what I was looking for was four chopsticks that were not only round at the top, but also round at the base. And I thought I'd done that when I ordered them, but uh, they came through, they're a little bit squarified, you know? So then we've got to work out how to drill a hole that thickness, and also another hole that thickness, or that diameter, should I say. And hence why I, what I've used this old piece of shelving for. I found that, um, let's get rid of that drill screwdriver bit. Um, now that fits in there just about right. Bit of effort, but it will go in there. Um, I've tried it on another piece of wood and where I've got, I've only just sunk the drill into this one. Now the drill bit for that one is quarter of an inch. Um, I don't know what that is in millimetre. So we're going to need a quarter of an inch um, drill bit. We're going to need, I've tried this one for the top, which is obviously smaller. Um, and it's just about right. I think it's six mil. Can't quite read after a time with these drill bits, the markings do. It's either five, it could be five mil, but it, I would say six mil. But uh, what you basically do is drill a hole in the piece of wood and see if it fits in, i.e. Does that fit into there? Just about it. Well, it will do once I've used the drill and opened it up a bit. So we need four chopsticks, yeah. two bits of wood, which are those two, and a test piece. Um, now, that being said, we're going to make um, a jig to fit what we want to use in it. So we've got to know some sort of dimensions that we're going to come out with. Um, well, going by my old jig, I actually cut out a four inch circle of wood and a thicker one for down the bottom um, and then started drilling holes. Well, I think this time I've got to be a bit more precise with where I drill these holes. Um, so the first part is to actually measure what I'll be using the jig. And I've brought a few things down here to give myself 
an idea. Now, I, as you probably know, I use foam balls, polystyrene, I think you call it something else in America. But that's the biggest one I go to. And I believe that that is about, that's two and, a, two and an eighth, two and an eighth inches or it's 60 mil wide. So we'll, we'll stay with the millimeters because 60 mil wide. And I know that this again is 60 mil wide, this egg shape. It doesn't matter about the height. We're on about diameters and circumferences on this. So we know that we, get, we need to actually go up to 60. So we just chopped down 60 millimeter on that one. As a remember. Um, I've also got a little pilot drill there, something like a, a 16th or something like that, just to go down through the holes first and then we can en enlarge them as we need them. Um, what else do I need to tell you? So the things we need is two pieces of board, four chopsticks, tape measure, pencil, three drill bits to the right size of these. As I say, one's a pilot. We've got a 60 mil there, so I suppose we should look at what the smallest I go down to, which is 25 mil, which is about an inch, isn't it? But, so we're gonna be working out where we want our holes on our piece of wood. Now the way I've chose to do this is get hold of this piece of wood, making sure it was a bit square on one end. I've measured out five inches. So I've got five inches along there. I've got five inches down to this line here. And if you, if you can see these, make sure you can see this. Uh, we've got, five inches from the top to the bottom line and five inches from side to side. I've done the same on the top part. This is going to be the bottom, yeah? I've found the center in the piece of wood. And what I intend on doing is marking out across, along the cross and drilling my holes. And I'm going to do that before I actually cut out my center section. This is all waste, yeah? But I want them not to be square. So at the at the death, when I finish cutting these two squares out, this one and that one over there, I'm going to put a pair of compasses on the center and bring it round so it's four inch circle. And you think, well, why does he want it circle rather than square? You could do, I, square would be okay. But with a circle, when you're actually working, um, the cord does catch up on lots of things. I've got an annoying um, seat in my work, uh, in my little room upstairs in the house where I do most of my work, and it catches on the adjusting mechanism. It, it, the cord will catch on anything that you leave sharp, even a, you know your watch or something like that. It catch on that. So I've decided to keep it as a circle and it makes a much better job. So I'm going to switch off there now. I'm going to measure out along that cross where I want my um, holes and along that cross over there where I want my holes. Taking the measurements of these balls and transferring it onto here. And when it comes back to the drilling stage, I'll switch back on again. Well, welcome back. I've had to change things slightly uh, when measuring out. Um, I wanted to have three sets of holes in this. So what I've done is I've actually drawn a diagonal from corner to corner. And the reason I've done that is because this hole here and the top one there on the center are 30 mil. And then the next one down I wanted was 13 mil the smaller ball that I'm doing and then it got awful close when I wanted to do my next holes. So what I've actually done is put the um, put the um, biggest holes on this axis yeah the smallest holes on this axis 
and then on the diagonals I put the one that was going to be too close to this smaller one here. So you can see I've rubbed a few out. So my dimensions have come out at uh, from the center 20 up the diagonal, um, 13 across the horizontal and 13 across the um, vertical and then the 30 outside. So what I'm going to do now is just put my pilot holes in and hope that I can be just about right. So I've got a piece of wood underneath. I'm going to probably go just a little bit on the outside of each mark. So that's a pilot hole. So they're both at 30 mil away from the center each, giving us 60 mil, which will allow this ball to drop down inside. So we now come out to the others. Um, so these four are for a bigger hole or bigger balls. Then we'll come in and do the smaller dimensions. This stuff will rip a little bit. But not too much, I hope. So those are the four holes for the bigger balls and these are the four holes for the smallest balls Yeah, You can see I've got four more marks on the diagonal for middle sized balls if you like. I'm just going to pilot those ones out. go um, yeah you can see that along that line there if I'd have drilled this hole and this hole together when I enlarged them they would have joined so best to have more axes than you need right let's put the quarter of an inch drill bit in and just enlarging those pilot holes See what happens. Four larger ones. We'll come in for our smaller ones. somewhere now. I just uh, put the down through the last four. And 
I wouldn't be surprised if I don't come back to this and put some more holes in, um, but we'll see. Um, what we really need now is a piece of sandpaper. Chopsticks are fitting. Might have to just enlarge them slightly. Or, of course, you could always just trim the edges off, but I find that that's all. This is bamboo wood and it's excellent. Once it's found its hole, it stays that shape. But I think I'm just going to run that through a couple of more times. to the end of this piece of wood. Right, so I'll change that battery in a second. Um, so there we are. We've got um, more or less the base there. What I'm gonna do next is just make a little mark in the center and put a pencil on a pair of compasses and bring a circle all the way around, like so. Then I'm going to use my jigsaw and cut it out. And you might think, well, why has he got this wasted bit around the edge? It's so that I don't have to cut up to the edge. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to cut out that one and probably mark and drill the top bit cut that out as well and I'll come back to you okay so just marking this one up as um, we did before with the other one um, I didn't show you me sort of making a, a mark in the center just to touch on with my pilot drill and then bring with this bring the circle around for cutting um, I've now got to mark up you can see I've cut this one out now. Not a perfect circle, but it doesn't really matter. I'm not the best of woodmen. Woodsman kits, well, playing with wood, but uh, I try my hardest. Um, so what we're going to do with this one now is mark the same holes on this one as that one. Then I'm going to cut out round that circle like so. Yeah, and I'll come back and show you then. Well, there we are. Perfectly uh, usable. Nice and strong, these little uh, um, chopsticks. The only reason I'm making this one is because one of the tops after a year broke off. I had to think about making another one. But I've been a bit snazzy. What I've actually done is the uh, other top that I've got. I can't see it now. There it is. I've actually drilled all these out as well so if I'm not happy with this one I can go back to my old one but with some new chopsticks in it which would work actually quite well. But you can see things got a little bit out of hand with how many holes I drilled in that and I dare say it'll happen on this one but there's the piece of wood I cut it out of you can see it's not uh, particular particularly round but a um, bit of a a file around the edges, um, around the wood, and you can get it more or less round. But uh, this will take care of all of these. Um, and if I come across a different size ball, then uh, I can always drill a few more holes here and there. But as it is at the moment, it's good. As I say, don't oversize the holes at the base. Force them in 
Uh, the top ones can be a little bit larger than what you want because the slope of the chopstick allows that to be pulled down and it's all quite solid then and you can play around with it. I must admit I looked at uh, some of the professional ones uh, with the steel bars coming up and they adjust it underneath with a, a nut and bolt and I thought what a palaver when you can just actually drill a load of holes in a piece of wood for chopsticks and away you go. Well, I hope this is helpful. I've now got to clear up um, and it's cold down the shed because it's winter. Um, but all the best and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.